We're taking a look at short answer questions from the 2015 New York State Chemistry Regents exams. Uh, the three exams, what I did was I broke up the short answer questions also by topic. Right now we're looking at matter and energy for 2015, so let's get started. So for number one, we're looking to identify the physical property in the table so we can differentiate the three elements. Um, so here, of course, physical property, we know that's describing matter without chemical changes, so oxide formulas wouldn't be it. And if I look at what remains, first of all, for phase and mass, they're all the same, so that can't differentiate. The only thing left, of course, is density, and that's my answer. So, of course, make sure you know what a physical and what a chemical property is. Now, you see I've crossed out the next couple of questions below it because, of course, they're part of a different topic. When you do an entire regions exam for part two, you're going to get questions that are mixed together. What I was trying to do here is show you where questions are repeating themselves in the different topics. So we're going to move to question two down here. Okay, so we have a chemical reaction. Also, let me point out to you straight off that Anytime you're dealing with short answer questions, remember there's information that's given to you above the questions or in the question one here above the table and the questions. You got to read everything because you never know what information you're going to need. So don't forget about that. I'm going directly to the questions now because we're going through explanations. All right, so in question two, we want to draw at least five particles in the box to represent the phase of the product. If you take a look at the reaction, reactants are on the left hand side, products are on the right, and here is carbon dioxide. The G in parentheses, of course, means I'm dealing with a gas. So when I go to the answer booklet, what does that mean? I want to draw these carbon dioxide molecules far away from one another in the box. They take up the volume of the box. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to follow their little code. I have a solid circle and then two open circles. Another solid circle, two opens. You get the point. They're not touching one another, okay? They're taking up the space in the box. And just like the directions say, make sure you draw, draw at least five. One, two, three, four, five. If you don't draw at least five, you will not get credit. Let's move on. Okay. Now here we have some matter, actually energy questions in question one here under energy. It says state the change in potential energy that's taking place as methane boils and lo and behold it's boiling here at its boiling point. The negative 161.5. Well, potential energy, kinetic energy relate back to heating curves. Where am I on my curve? I'm boiling. That means I'm going from a liquid to a gas, which is going to be here. Remember, when you have a heating curve, it's temperature versus time. And you need to remember your definition for temperature. Temperature is a measure of the kinetic energy of the particles of the substance. And at a phase change, which boiling liquid to gas is, temperature is being held constant. That means kinetic energy is constant. But you're still putting energy in. So what does that mean? That energy is potential energy. So potential energy increases is your answer. Let's take a look at some more questions. Here we have a heating curve. The first question that pertains to this heating curve is says determine the boiling point of the sample. Well, make sure you look at the information here at the top. It started out as a liquid at 65 degrees. Then the sample was heated uniformly up to 125. Well, guess what? It went from a liquid, then a liquid, to a gas, and then a gas. Put the labels on the heating curve. It makes your life a lot easier. Boiling point means you're going from a liquid to a gas, or here, and you go over, and there's your answer, 95 degrees Celsius. For question two, State what happens to potential energy now of the particles during the time interval BC. Time interval BC is right here again. It's at the phase change. So at the phase change, second time now in 2015, 
we have the same question. And we're at a phase change. Temperature is being held constant. That means kinetic energy is constant. So where is that energy going? Its potential energy increases once again. We'll stop here. Check out the next video for some more explanations. Keep working hard and good luck.